Biggest Gem Deals on Pawn Stars. What do we got? Well, I have a piece of antique heirloom jewelry. It was the signet ring of the mafia boss, Lucky Luciano. I've had it in hiding for 40 years. I decided to come to the pawn shop today. They're going to want it not for its jewelry value, but because of its history. My mother was a woman who did special services for these people. These gentlemen trusted her things that they couldn't trust anyone else. The following customer brings in a ring made for the Mafia boss, Lucky Luciano. The customer had this item in hiding for years, as Lucky Luciano is one of the most feared and dangerous mob bosses. She was given it to protect it. It'd be pretty interesting if it was his ring. He was associated with Arnold Rothstein. He was pretty much credited for making the mob what it is. This guy started his first gang in New York when he was like a teenager. If you look at the picture, that's the face of a devil. Luciano was a mobster. He killed people. Okay, do you get any paperwork on this? I had a person describe it to me over the phone. The customer claims that an individual who worked with Lucky Luciano gave his mother this ring as the customer's mother frequently worked with Luciano. The ring had an intricate design and even had some ruby in it. For the heart and the rubies for the eyes. I think it's worthwhile getting some more info on this thing. It could be worth some huge money to the right collector. I'd have to make sure that he actually owned it before I'd pay any more than that. This is the one guy that would actually know. So let me give him a call. I'll be right back. <laughs> The guys usually call me down to the pawn shop. This is it, allegedly the ring of Lucky Luciano. The customer was looking to get six figures for this ring, and Rick knew that there would be people willing to spend big money on this item. Naturally, Rick was a bit skeptical and wanted to be 100% sure, so he called in an expert. This guy immigrated from Sicily uh, who modernized organized crime. So it was a way in which they could manage territories. He was then imprisoned uh, in 1937. He was then released but deported back to Italy. It was through the mafia that connections were made back in Italy. Lucky Luciano was able to secure his release. The expert revealed that Lucky Luciano grew up in New York City and worked his way up to a high authority position. Lucky Luciano was even sent to prison, but was released during World War II since Luciano was able to help the government. You'd be looking at something that would be worth tens of thousands of dollars. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of this ring? I was told it probably was manufactured in the late 1800s, but I don't have any way of proving that. You're the curator of the Ma Museum. I'm sure you've seen thousands of photos of Lucky Luciano. It's not something that I'm familiar with. Unfortunately, I just don't think we can conclude. Thanks, Jonathan. Even though the ring did have some valuable gems on it, there just wasn't enough information to prove that this was actually related to Lucky Luciano. The expert was honest, and the customer was definitely a bit disappointed hearing this. Meteorite. I have something here that is out of this world. A meteorite. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> can I touch it? Yes, sir. Meteorite hunting is a hobby of mine. Today, I would like to get 4,700 for my stone. What's it made out of? Uh, nickel, iron, and just ordinary chondritic stone. That's the black line that goes all the way around the outside of it. The following customer brings in one of the coolest items ever featured on the show, a literal meteorite that came from outer space. The meteorite was packed with different minerals, and he was looking to get a reasonable amount. It's only been on the ground for maybe three to five months, and you can see part of the the sand from where it was laying. The patina hasn't worn off yet. Yeah, it traveled billions of miles to land here and in your hands. I mean, I, I dig it. I think it's really neat. I don't even know if it's a meteorite. I'm going to go get my jingle, hang out. Um, but I bought the stuff for sale, so <laughs> just right. check them out. Rick was definitely impressed by this item, but he really didn't know much about the meteorite market and wasn't sure that this was an authentic meteorite. The customer provided multiple pieces of evidence showing that it was authentic. How much did you want for it? Uh, I'd like to get 4700 I've been hunting meteorites for the last 20 years, it gets me to feel um, I'm young again. Still. Okay, I mean, is it a meteorite? Rarely, if ever a meteorite, so I want to say that first. Can I have your permission to do that again? Absolutely. I know. Okay. All right, that's interesting. You saw how that danced on there? I'm going to look at it a little closer. The customer was rightfully looking to get a decent amount of money, and Rick called in an expert to make sure. The expert was honest and told the customer not to get his hopes too high, but when he did a few tests, things looked promising. What you're looking for is whether it has these grains of metal. Okay, so it's so it's a meteorite? That rock is older than this planet. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, the other piece is actually at UCLA. What do you think it's worth? Well, Rick, I gotta tell you, this is a $4,000 meteorite. These are the oldest rocks in the solar system. I have to resell this. It turns out that these meteorites were legit. The expert even revealed that this meteorite was older than the planet itself and also revealed that it was worth around $4,000. The customer was definitely very excited. Realistically, it does look like a rock. It could be 1,800 bucks. Could you do 2250? To a degree. It's the only meteorite in the world that's shaped like this. I mean, it, 
I'll give you 21. I'm not gonna, I, I won't give you a dime more. I mean, that's, that's it. 200 sounds fair. Okay, deal, man. Thank you very much. And, you know, I didn't really have to do anything except pick it up. Even though this was an object that literally came from outer space, Rick wasn't willing to spend much on it. Rick tried to argue that he would have a hard time selling it, but eventually the two landed at a deal at $2,100 and not a penny more. Mystery stone. Got something here. It's a wee bit heavy. Uh, it's been to museums. It's been to paleontologists. So who knows? It's a mystery. I think this rock is really cool because it's just so unusual. I'm hoping for great things for the rock, you know? Well, it came from southern Utah. I was just out hiking. No other rocks like it around it. It's a little different on the bottom. Oh, it's even weirder. The following customer brings in this massive mystery rock that the customer claims has been to museums. The customer had pretty high hopes for this rock and reveals she got the rock from Southern Utah and Rick seemed interested. It weighs about 40 pounds. It's a really, really odd shape. So it's pretty rare when an item comes into my shop and I don't have some idea what it is. It's not radioactive or anything. It's not dinosaur dung. It does look like that perfect piece of poo. Took a little piece off right here. He said, I have no idea what you have there. This thing is over 40 pounds. The rock had a very odd shape, and even Rick had zero clue what it was. The customer consulted multiple different experts, ranging from meteorologists to dinosaur experts, and none of them had any clue what it was. Rick was just as confused. If this thing is from space, we could be talking hundreds of thousands. If it actually lands on the ground, it's a meteorite. If I will call the smartest guy I know, and if he doesn't know, it's extraterrestrial. So far, a lot of specialized people have seen it. What the hell is it? <laughs> she got it in Southern Utah, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, now that's it. Interesting. Very nice. Rick has been in this industry for numerous years and knows a lot about all sorts of items, but this is the first time where Rick had no idea what it was. In response, Rick calls in the smartest man he knows to attempt to solve this mystery. Well, I know exactly what this is. It's a concretion. Now, there are two types. It's still a concretion. Still don't know what it is. <laughs> it is a natural formation when there is a void in rock. If you cut through it, you would find something at the core of this got created around it. You're not looking quite as excited as... Okay. <laughs> Against all odds, the expert knew exactly what this mystery rock is. It turns out it was a concretion, which is a compact mass formed by the precipitation of mineral cement over the span of millions of years. And there was likely something in the middle. So it's a rock that looks like a turd. There, there are other rocks out there that actually were turds. The largest ones of these that are known, 25 feet in diameter. Are there a lot of rocks like this? Uh, yes. Unless you're a rock collector, I guess. Perfectly understandable why the owner would think this was a really unusual piece. It's kind of an interesting piece you ran into. The expert reveals that these rocks can be up to 25 feet in diameter and could be worth some value for devoted rock collectors. The expert reveals that these types of rocks are extremely common and weren't worth Worth as much as they first thought. Ancient statue. I have something very, very unique. This is ancient Aspera dancer statue. And where in the hell did you get this? It's been in our family forever. I came down to the pawn shop to sell my old family heirloom. I want 5000 for it, so I thought I would come down here. This is pretty cool. Well, it's definitely sandstone, because if it was granite or marble, it weighed three times. The following customer brings in an ancient Apsara statue said to be from the 10th century. The customer's family had possession of this statue for decades, but now he was looking to cash it out. Rick then revealed some more information. Sandstone was the stone of choice. There were statues everywhere. There was just so much that had to be done. They had to use a softer stone. Apsaras are like angels, and they're all carved differently. I would love to have this in my store. I know I could sell it quick. You said this has been in the family forever. Do you know how someone got it originally? It came from India. We've had it. Rick mentions that this type of artwork from this particular time period is really rare. Sandstone was utilized as it was a more accessible stone. Rick was definitely excited to see this artwork, and he wanted to sell it in his shop. Okay, so you had an ancestor who was yeah. in, lived in India. If this is from the 10th century. It's uber cool, and that's the part that scares the hell out of me. Okay. It's too good to be true. Well, if you've had it in a suitcase for like 100 years, <laughs> what about the last, the 900 years? When you have tourists, you have people who want to sell them stuff. To sell it to the British tourists because they had hard currency. I need to know if it's real. Rick mentions that the high quality of the item makes it extremely suspicious as Rick felt like it was too good to be true. Egypt is known for being a massive tourist attraction, so there are lots of fake items. Rick needed to consult an expert on this item. Do you mean you want to sell it? Yes, yes. I was asking $5,000 for it. Okay. I would really like someone to check this out. He'll come in, he'll take a look at it, and we'll go from there. Hey, Rick, how are you doing? Good I'm to doing see great. you again. I called in a friend, Dr. Phineas, who is an expert 
expert in Asian antiquities. Rick sent me a text message of this. Rick calls in the expert. Dr. Phineas was an expert in Asian antiques, and he definitely was a bit on the eccentric side. The customer was looking to get $5,000 for the statue, which was a substantial amount of money, and Rick was on edge. What are your personal concerns? He says it's from India and the 10th century. It's in really good shape. Exquisite way that it's been preserved. Thousand years old, it would be pitted terribly. So you're calling this an Apsara, right? You, you wanna see it flying. This piece is missing the feet. This face is not Indian, it's Cambodian. The customer took a look at every single detail of this item and noted that the aging signs didn't add up. If this item really was 1,000 years old, it would be in significantly worse condition, and the statue didn't even add up to the authentic statues. It was a replication, probably like around 75 to 150 years old. 1,200 to maybe like $2,200. Are you still stuck on five grand? 18. And if I buy for 18, mm -hmm. I'd most likely lose money. I'll take a thousand. It was in good shape. I'll give you 800 $8.50. No, I'll do it. Okay, sweet. It turns out that this statue was actually from Cambodia, and it was in great condition, making it worth a decent amount of money. The expert appraised the item at around two grand, and eventually Rick and the customer came to a decent deal. Kunzite gem. Going on. I need some money. Got a family heirloom. It's a Kunzite. A Kunzite. Kunzite. It's been in my family for generations and generations. That's all I know. This guy walks up to Rick, and he has one thing on his mind. Money. He's looking to pawn a family heirloom. They only discovered the stone, like, right around 19. Uh, a generation? I come to see the guys at the pawn shop quite often. All right, do you know anything about it? Yeah, I guess it's an evening stone or something. Coons I can actually fade in sunlight. They're really rare. Um, I'm gonna have Jeff, my gemologist, check it out. You don't think it's real? No, I don't. Come on. <laughs> Rick sure does know his stuff, and he's not about to let anybody finesse him out of money. So even though Davey's a regular at the pawn shop, he decides to get the gem tested. And you can't really blame him for being cautious. Davey says this is kunzite. Well, that'd be cool. That's pretty exciting, because I don't always see kunzite. All stones have clarity characteristics, and so what I can see in here are inclusions that tell me that this is natural. But I won't know if it's a natural kunzite until I do other tests. Upon testing, it seems like Davey's telling the truth, but the guys are not in the mood to take a risk over something so expensive and rare. So they decided to run some more tests. It's Kunzite. We're gonna find out if you're lying. And it measures the way light goes through the stone. And as I can see through here, it has the right refractive index. It is a natural Kunzite. Ah, I told you. I told you it was real. Finally, the truth is out. The stone is real and natural. You can just tell from the look on Davy's face that he's relieved to hear that. Well, how much money? How much does it go for? With this size, thirty to fifty dollars a carat. Okay, how many carats does it weigh? Three hundred and twenty-three point eight carats. Mm, at thirty dollars a carat, right at ninety-six hundred bucks, right in that neighborhood. Knowing Davy, he's gonna try and squeeze me for all it's worth. Well, it's real. I feel it's worth fifteen grand. Even after being told that the stone can't be worth more than $9,600, Davy is adamant that he wants $15,000 for it. I mean, sure, the stone might have some historical value, but that's not nearly enough to bump its price up this much. $9,600 if I need one. I don't need one. It deserves big money. I'll give you five grand. It's going to sit for a long time. 15 grand, five grand, 10 grand. I'll go 10 Gs. Where are we going to end? Meet in the middle? 75? I'll, I'll give you six grand. 65? Things like that. You're He's... winning. I was at 15 grand. Come on. Bro. Safe to say, Rick is completely caught off guard by that price tag. But dealing with customers like this is his specialty. So he starts negotiating at $5,000. But Davey isn't here to play around either. Both men get into a full blown bargaining war. Be a little bit more reasonable. All right, 65. All right. All right, give me your ID. You know, sometimes they win, sometimes I win. I mean, uh, this one, they won. Surprisingly, this time, Rick has to cave in and buy the stone $1,500 over his initial offer. Gemstone skull. It's a tiger's eye gemstone skull. And I've heard if you get 13 of them, the aliens will come down or something will happen. Try to sell my tiger's eye skull. I would like to get a little extra money for some gambling, but I won't walk out with less than 150. This guy walks into the store, and let's just say his item is a bit peculiar. He's looking to sell a tiger's eye gemstone skull. The fact that this man thinks 13 of these could bring aliens to Earth is even creepier. So tell me about this. The tiger's eye gemstone, and it used to be made into jewelry. You know, the cool thing about it is it has like a silky luster about it. It has a nice 20 Z. Okay, right, Chumley. 
The guys do seem interested in the item. But the question is, are they interested enough to pay 200 bucks for it? I mean, sure, the thing does look very cool. Her eyes are a little spooky to look at. And there's plenty of weirdos out there that like skulls. Do you want to sell it, punt it, or what? I'd be thrilled with the 200. Basically, to me, it's an oversized paperweight. Gem collectors like them, skull collectors would like them. Did you go 130? Couldn't go like 150. If you buy it for 140 and it don't sell. Okay, deal. I could do 140. The skull eventually gets sold for $140, which is honestly quite impressive for something that doesn't look like it would have a lot of interest from other customers. But hey, what do I know? Let's just hope that thing isn't cursed. Roman Catholic Cardinal. We're gonna help you with Cardinal's ring, I'd like to sell you. Oh, this guy. That's right. I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell my 19th century Cardinal's ring. My bottom dollar is 6,300 bucks. It's from the 19th century, and we know that because of the jeweler. A customer brings Rick what he claims is a ring given out to a Cardinal by the Pope, but his word alone may not be enough and it makes sense you'll see his name on there they even have really exquisite pieces that are in the loop it's worth a lot more rick obviously has a lot of questions and you can't blame him why do you think it's a cardinal's ring indicated that it had to be some type of religious icon i know there's over a hundred of them you know what the center stone is it's a garnet i believe sapphires come in every single color in the rainbow i'd love to get six thousand okay they're not the highest quality stones i'm not trying to represent or sell this on the basis of the stones value in history but the thing is i have to verify now the customer does seem to be pretty honest he comes clean to Rick about how the stones in the ring might not be of the highest quality, but he still expects to make some money off of the item's historical value. See, I have faith because I've had the ring in my possession. Let me go give someone a call. I'll get him down here, find out if it's a Cardinal's ring. The supposed Cardinal's ring. Really? I specialize in any form of historical artifact. When they started officially saying, this is how we're going to recognize your office. But this ring falls out of Rick's area of expertise. So he decides to call in a favor from the administrator of the Clark County County Museum now. If there's anyone who can authenticate this ring, it's this guy. It's a big deal. So one of the things that you want to find, sign of the church, any ring coming from the Pope. In here, you've got a very nice cross, almost a Maltese cross on both sides. All seems to be going well. They think the ring is legit because it has some of the markings needed to authenticate a ring from that period in time. But what's a pawn sale without some drama? Unfortunately, that's all you see. There is no other symbolic it is probably not a ring of office. For the ring to be the ring of office, that's the only ring that counts. Thanks, man. You're the best. Alrighty. Thank you. But we still have an antique ring from a famous jewelry house, so I'm still interested. You can just see the look of disappointment on everyone's faces after hearing that. But this deal isn't over yet. While the ring might have not belonged to the Pope, it is still an antique piece of jewelry made by one of the most famous jewelry houses. Before I make an offer, I want to go test the stone. Um, I'm going to come back and make an offer. I'm the precious gemstone expert here at the pawn shop. So what do we got? This is a Hessenite Groschlerite garnet. Uh, it's a Hessenite. Hessenite. Emeralds on the side, right? Yes. All right, thanks. Upon inspection, we find out that this is a garnet ring. Now, for those of you not in the know, garnet isn't a very valuable stone. And the fact that the stones aren't in the best condition only complicates things more. This whole deal rides on one thing, the ring's manufacturer. It's a garnet, those are emeralds. My jewelers in the back can make this ring for under $1,000. 1,500 bucks. Whew. But the stuff of his that goes for big money is really elaborate pieces. It was 2000, period. It's unsizable. Most rings, they leave a simple piece of gold on the back. The decoration goes all the way around. I'm not going to go up anymore. While the price of this ring has significantly dropped from what we were expecting earlier, $2,000 for something that this customer got for free doesn't sound like a bad deal. But the question is, will he accept that? Well, I'll probably be more blessed having the 2000 You got a deal. 2000 is a lot less than what I was trying to get. In the end, the customer takes Rick's deal. Ancient Egyptian scarab ring. Hey, how can I help you? An Egyptian scarab ring. I'd like to know if this is the real thing or not. The scarab ring is from the 18th dynasty, 1500 BC. I would like to see it go to someone who could really appreciate. A woman walks into the pawn shop and she has an extremely rare item to sell. It's an 18th dynasty Egyptian scarab ring. But will the item's historical value be enough to get her a good deal? This is really cool. It's a scarab. Way back in Egypt, everybody had one. To really, really extravagant jewelry that the pharaohs would wear. It looks like an old scarab, but the question is, is it really 3,000 years old? Right off the bat, 
Rick seems to be interested in the scarab, but he is a little concerned about if the artifact is actually 3,000 years old, like the customer says it is. Oh, that is the card from the guy that it's guaranteed that is from the 18th dynasty. So I'm assuming you want to sell it? Yes. I would like uh, 15,000 for it. Do you mind if I have someone look at it? I mean, this thing is truly is 3,500 years old. There, there's something here. <laughs> <laughs> really? No kidding. Yes, I, I do. I'm going to give him a call and see what he thinks of it. I'll be right back. Even though the lady has a written receipt that allegedly verifies the ring's age, that isn't enough to convince Rick, especially considering how the woman wants $15,000 for it. So he decides to dial up the experts. The scarab ring her grandmother picked up in Egypt. Do you mind if I touch the ring? Oh, go right ahead. This beetle was a dung beetle. The Egyptians put the scarab on rings. So is it real? Right there is a son, usually one of these women, almost every mummy. Now, the expert is able to verify that this scarab is from the 18th dynasty. But old doesn't always mean expensive. Turns out, this scarab isn't as rare as we initially thought. That when I study the gold work, very indicative of like turn of the century, it could have been made in Egypt. I think that is a real scarab. So you're looking at right around $450 to $500. Ouch! That definitely isn't what this customer was expecting to hear. This guy just brought her family heirlooms value down from $15,000 to $300. Now the question is, Will she walk out or will she take the bullet and sell? Okay, so obviously it's not going to be $15,000, $350 for it. $1,500? I can literally make these for $450. $375? <laughs> I'll take it. We got a deal then. We got All a right. deal. 